Welcome to the Caddy Series. This is where I take a handicapped golfer from any ability down one hole. Let's see how their strategy changes to my strategy after caddying on the European Tour for three years. Let's head into today's video where we've got Sam who plays of 22. I know you can learn something from this guys. So guys, you've got to think of this series as imagining I'm on your shoulder and today I'm on Sam's shoulder, hopefully offering him some good advice out on the golf course. So 18th hole here at Motsham Hall, let's start. Okay, Sam, so we're on the 18th hole. Yep. We're here. Imagine we've got a good score in our hand. How are we approaching this first shot? Well, just trying to get back to the clubhouse now. So <laughs> just trying straight down the middle. Okay, so you play with a fade or a draw? A fade. Yeah, so if we think about this right now, if you imagine you aim it down the middle, which is okay, we want the ball to finish, and you hit that little bit of a fade, where could you potentially end up? So I'm either going to be blocked out by your first three or blocked out, yeah. if I hit a good one, probably blocked out by the second one. So I sort of want you to play with what you've got, okay? Okay. Play with that little bit of a fade. So I want you to almost, if you tee up on the right hand side of this tee box for us, yeah. opens up this left wing a little bit, so yeah. it takes this tree out of play, and you can aim down that left and allow it to come back to that middle. So you're almost like allowing yourself to open up the hole. Yeah. Right, and if you were a drawer of the golf ball, I'd be thinking, right, okay, well I can get on this right si left side of the tee box, yeah. I can really feel as though I can move it with the shape of the hole. Okay. I'm the same as you, like I, I fade it, so I'd be on this right edge of the tee box, pegging it away. Right, okay. So, go on, get, get a driver. I think we can go away. It was wide enough a driver here. There's not too much trouble. Bunker on the left's good. So, other things that I want you to take into account now, I know it's not windy right now, but if there was some wind, I want to go through a process of, right, okay. I've chosen my club, I've chosen where I want the ball to finish, middle of the fairway, and my start yeah. line's going to be a little bit left of that. Yeah. I've got to take the wind into account. Now, I know today there's not a breath of wind, yeah. apart from being freezing, which is ball's going to go shorter, yeah. but you've got to take that wind into account, because imagine that wind was battering you off your left, yeah. that ball could be exaggerated left to right. So if that if it's battering off the left, do I just aim more left and try yeah. to play off the wind? I, I definitely would for someone that okay. hits a little bit of a fade. Yeah. Now, if the wind was battering off your right, you would maybe go what you said yeah. and aim down the middle and know your fade's going to buffer it rather than aiming on the left and buffering the wind and it's staying left. Okay. So it's, it's taking those elements into account every single time. Yeah. Okay, let's see this drive and we'll head down the fairway. Beauty, sir. Good. Pure that. Get the bag down. <laughs> So that was an absolutely brilliant shot there. Aim down the left, let it bleed. I don't know, I've ended up carrying the bag. <laughs> well, it's your, your job, isn't it? It's your job. Well, to be fair, it is. I'm on your shoulder, though. Right. Like, I'm not, like, fully caddy mode. I'm just advice mode right now. Right. So, guys, let us know down below what you would have done in that situation. What is your kind of go-to strategy out on the golf course? And even if, do you have one? So please do comment down below. We'd love to know exactly kind of how you approach a shot. Hopefully we can find Sam's ball here. Yeah, I think we've got it here in the semi. Beautiful drive. Okay. Would have run out into the fairway on a drive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cold here, guys. Cold here, guys, this morning. Okay, Sam, so par five, and we've got a decision to make here. Do we go for it? No. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to think about here is you've lasered the bunker on the right, you've lasered the bunker on the left. Yeah. Like how far were they? Um, I didn't do the one on the right, so hopefully I'm not going to go anywhere. Okay, fair enough. The one that's directly ahead of us is 195, which out of the rough probably aren't going to reach it. No, but what I'd say is, right, if you're going to lay up, you've got to lay up properly. There's right. nothing more annoying than, say, for example, you took six iron or five iron there yeah. and bulleted this and ends up in the bunker. You're like, oh, yeah, and you're like, yeah, I've yeah. hit a brilliant shot there and I've ended up in the absolute crap. Yeah. So you've got to be in that situation where so I'm going to hit a... Safe, yeah, very, very safe. if you're going to play slay up, you're going to lay up properly. Like the amount of times like I'd be giving Tom a club and think, please just go short, please just go short. I'm like, why are you causing yourself that anxiety? Like you don't hit a good shot and not get rewarded for it. Yeah. So I'd be thinking, no matter what club I hit here, if I bullet it, it's going to be okay. Yeah. That's the situation you've got to be in every single time. Yeah. So, okay, and take the wind into account. Again, there's no wind right now, but you'd, take, you'd factor that in as yeah. well. So. Where are we going here? What, what kind of line are we taking? Again, because I play a fade, well, I'm thinking I'm just going to play like a six iron, just aim directly at the bunker. Yeah. If it comes up short, comes up short, or it could just fade into the middle. Yeah. Okay. 
Perfect, let's go with that. It's a little bit of a swing thought going in there, go on then. What? So bit, guys, if you do want to check out Sam's other video, we put it up here on the side of the screen, go and check that out. That was all about kind of basically how the right arm works in the golf swing. And you were doing that there, I think this is a great thing. So you see all the top pros do this, they have like a swing thought, they have like a premise or something to work to. I think building that into your pre-shot routine is like one of the great things you can do. Yeah. So I want you to do that all the time. Yeah, as long as, I as long as I'm not thinking about when I'm addressing the ball, I think that's a, a lucky thing once you're, you're behind it, you're having a lucky thing, right, this is what I'm trying to do, but then as soon as you address the ball, I'm thinking, right, just... Yeah, and you know what's mad, right, because you're, you're much better than 22 handicap, like, you're a really good golfer, like, you, mean, you're 20, you shot three over on the, on the back nine at Cardin Park, like, you don't do that if you're not a good golfer, but, like, most people watching this going, oh, 22, I don't need to think about that, I've just got to hit it away, but you can vouch for this, you can say, oh, no, I think you've got to have a better mentality to basically make sure you're improving your golf. Yeah. You want your, your good to be your best and then hopefully not try and limit the amount of time to Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give this one a rip. So down, down the left edge, let it bleed back into the middle. Guys, so please do let me know if you are enjoying this brand new series on Alex Elliott Golf, the Caddy Series, where I caddy for all levels of golfers. Pros, club, mid handicappers, high handicappers, low handicappers, whoever it is. You guys can learn something from this, so please do let me know if you are enjoying this video by hitting that thumbs up button. I really would appreciate that. And if you are wanting to join this team, again, thank you so much in that big red subscribe button. Let's carry on with the rest of this video. We've got to get ourselves out of situation here. Okay, 117. What's going through your head? Middle flag, so really accessible flag. So if you were kind of categorizing these flags on the golf course, this is how like me and Tom used to do it. You have like a, a green, which means all day you can go at, like middle of the green basically, um, or like a good wind or, or feeling good on the day. Uh, amber, which is like, if I need to, I'm gonna go for it, and then red is like no go. So right now I think this is like green, you can go at this one, no problem at all. Okay, I've, it's 117 yards, so yep. usually I'd probably hit pitching wedge. I, honestly, I would go pitching wedge because if you think like that flag's pretty much slap bang in the middle, yeah. you could take 10 yards off that, 107, and you're comfortable getting there with your wedge at 107 yards, yeah. rather than I think going 9 iron sort of going to get you in a situation where it's like, I'm not going to be able to commit to the shot. Yeah. I don't think you want to be in that space. You want to be in that space where you can fully commit to the shot. Okay, we'll go pitching wedge. the clubs. This is your, another thing that's your job, <laughs> That is actually you know, a really important thing though, you think about it, like amount of times people come for a lesson with me and they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna play with, I'm gonna hit a shot with this dirty club and I'm like, whoa, 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 that makes such a difference, especially out the rough even more so I think. You can get a flyer here which is like where grass and grass and moisture gets caught between the ball and the club face, it just based it ultimately, well, yeah. pardon the pun, but it flies off. How's that? I don't know if there's a bunker down there. Right, are, you, are you finished? Up a little bit short. A bit short? Yeah, and a bit left. But it's okay. Now, one thing you'll notice if you're watching the golf on the European Tour, Sam, and you watched a bit of the golf at Wentworth last week, didn't you? Yeah. And like, you, you, I mean, it, I'm on the telly. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have gone. But you know what annoys, not annoys me, but I'd love to hear kind of more dialogue between the caddy and the player. I think that's something that loads of people can learn a lot from. Because the caddy's constantly like, ah, oh, make sure you smooth swing, feel good. Yeah. Almost constantly like trying to basically tell them that they're doing a good job and they're in a good position. So I think you can do that yourself though on the golf course. Like that space in between walking between shots and walking down the fairway, especially when you're playing bad. If you could constantly say, right, okay, it's quite good that, good swings, good swing, good thoughts, nice and smooth. It's basically like having your own caddy on your shoulder, which is what I want people to learn. Yeah, definitely. I think just either, just thinking about your next shot and not your, your last shot is, a, is quite a good, good way to think about it. And that's quite a... I do the opposite of thinking about the last <laughs> shot and next shot. Hey, you all right? You're not in the bunker, Pinai? Putting here, guys, we are putting. Oh, well, we've ruined it now, I was gonna chip. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sam, decision to be made here. Are you gonna chip it or put that? Well, I was gonna chip it, but then walking up, you said we're putting, so I presume you're yeah. gonna know it's a putter. That's gotta be a put all day long, like, you think like, 
straight away I'd be thinking right okay I'd stand over it thinking well I've only got sort of this amount of grass which is not like the green to go through right I know this fringe is a bit longer than the green but actually it's a bit more predictable let's get the put I ask questions your worst chip can be, be better than your worst put yeah true yeah very true so I'd be thinking put it all day long where, where, where are you aiming, Daddy? I've not got that far yet. So I'd be thinking here, a little bit left to right, and I always would kind of walk the length of the putt, Sam, just to get kind of a feeling for the distance. Like when you're wicket keeping, yeah. that you'd walk the distance, wouldn't you, to make sure you're the right distance on the ball, so you got a good perception of how far you need to basically... Yeah, go to the side and see how far back you are. The same thing here, and I'd only do it on like long putts or putts like this, I wouldn't get into it all the time. Not put on the, put it on the greens yet, so it's not fast yet. Here we go. I've never heard a pro say that before. <laughs> they wouldn't be listening to this bad. So I reckon... A little bit left to right. Maybe three balls outside. I, I would go more like two because there's a bit of dew on the ground, right. so it's not going to move as much this morning. Okay. okay. See what? Some put that. Bad, it, not bad at all. Okay, let's finish off. This is for your five. A little bit right to left, but it's taking your time on these as well because. So it's taking your time on these as well because a lot of people just rush this up, final put of the round, do your due diligence on it, get into it, really make sure you know what's happening on the put. Okay Sam, so what's one thing you've learnt from today there? A couple of things really. So play with your shot shape. Yeah. You know, don't aim, you know, for the, this next fairway if you're gonna hit a slide. Try yeah. and try and put you know, if you hit a fade then take into fade. account. Um, if you're going to play safe, make sure you you do play safe. And you're not going to knife it through the bunker or um, and places like that. If you can put, put. Yeah, yeah. don't take too you much know, risk. Try and you know spin it within. Like. Get up, get up and down. Do you think that there though? That's a five, five or three points. Yeah. And you played that like you've hit one little dodge shot, the layup a little bit low left. Yeah. But you've sort of made what could be a hard hole quite easy. Yeah. Stress free, yeah, okay, stress, stress free. Yeah, I wouldn't say easy, but stress free, definitely. And that, if you can make more holes stress free like that, I think that's the space you've got to be in. You don't have to pure it all the time. Just by planning it, just planning your way around the hole. Yeah, sort of exactly. What you're do where you can, you know, look at the lie, looking at where you're going to play your next shot from, and ideally what your the percentage shot is. I think that's the major thing, isn't it? It's video one of the Caddy series. Thank you very much for watching.